In the world of electronics and communication, fiber optic technology has emerged as a game changer. Its ability to transmit data at high speeds over long distances with minimal signal loss makes it an ideal choice for various applications, from telecommunications to industrial automation. In this video, we will delve into the world of fiber optic communication and how you can integrate it with an Arduino to create exciting projects. So, let's not waste any time and get started. Before we dive into the Arduino integration, let's briefly understand the fundamentals of fiber optic communication. What is the optical fiber communication? Optical fiber communication is a method of transmitting information using light signal instead of electric signal. An optical fiber cable is used to transmit these light signals from one place to another. How does optical fiber communication work? Optical fiber signals are transmitted by using pulses of light, which are converted into electrical pulses inside an electronic device called a transmitter. The electrical pulses are then converted back into light pulses inside another electronic device called a receiver. The first step in optical fiber communication is to convert the electrical signals into optical signals. This can be done by sending a signal down an LED or laser diode or through a modulator that uses an electrical signal to control the intensity of light emitted from a light emitting diode. Once we've converted electrical signals into optical ones, the next step involves transmitting these optical signals over long distances. This can be done through free space or using materials like plastic or glass as a guiding medium. In the final step, the optical signal reaches the receiver where it's transformed back into an electrical signal. This conversion enables the retrieval and processing of the original data for various applications. In conclusion, optical fiber communication involves converting electrical signals to light signals, transmitting them over long distances through the fiber, and then converting them back to electrical signals at the receiver. Now that we have a basic understanding of fiber optic communication, let's explore how you can integrate it with an Arduino for various applications. I'm going to use HFBR1414 Fiber Optic Transmitter Module, which is manufactured by Broadcom. It is a low-cost, high-power transmitter that is designed for use in industrial, power generation, power distribution, medical, transportation, and gaming applications. The HFBR1414 can transmit data at rates up to 160 megabaud over distances of up to 2.7 kilometers. It is compatible with a variety of fiber optic cable types. The HFBR fiber optic transmitter contains an 820 nanometers aluminum gallium arsenide emitter, capable of efficiently launching optical power into four different optical fiber sizes. This allows the designer flexibility in choosing the fiber size. This transmitter has high coupling efficiency, allowing the emitter to be driven at low current levels, resulting in low power consumption and increased transmitter reliability. Consistent coupling efficiency is assured by the double lens optical system. Consistent coupling efficiency reduces receiver dynamic range requirements, which allows for longer link lengths. For optical fiber, I'm going to use a multi-mode fiber optic cable. The core diameter of this cable is 62.5 micrometers and the cladding diameter is 125 micrometers. This type was commonly used in older fiber optic installations. Basically, there are two types of optical fiber cables, single mode and multi-mode. Optical fibers are composed of a core and a cladding, both of which are typically made from a transparent glass or plastic medium. The core is the component through which the light signals travel, and it is typically smaller in diameter than the cladding. The cladding acts as a barrier to prevent the light from exiting the core and focuses it within the core. This combination of core and cladding creates an optical fiber. The cable is then coated with a buffer, a material that helps protect it from damage. A final layer of protection, outer jacket or cable jacket, further strengthens the cable. The jacket is color-coded to identify the type of optical fiber in the cable, yellow for single mode, orange for multi-mode, and so on. The main difference between the two is the size of the core, with single mode fiber having a smaller core than multi-mode fiber. 
The receiver I am using, which is HFBR2412, is also from Broadcom. The HFBR2412 is typically used in conjunction with the HFBR1414 transmitter to create a complete fiber optic communication link. It is a low-cost, high-performance receiver that is designed for use in the same applications as the transmitter. This receiver can receive data at rates up to 5 megabaud over distances of up to 2 kilometers. It is also compatible with a variety of fiber optic cable types. The receiver is housed in the same low-cost, dual inline package as the transmitter. The light signal from the optical fiber enters the receiver through a lens and is incident on the photodiode. The photodiode generates an electrical current that is proportional to the intensity of the light signal. This electrical current is then amplified and converted into a logic level signal by the receiver's internal circuitry. The HFBR2412 output signal is an open collector Schottky transistor, which can be used to drive a variety of different loads, such as LEDs, relays, and other transistors. Now that we have a basic understanding of fiber optic communication, let's explore how you can integrate it with an Arduino. The data sheet of the HFBR series provides a typical 5 megabaud link circuit. This circuit will serve as a reference for our Arduino-compatible TTL drive circuit. In this circuit, resistor R1 is the most significant component in the drive circuit as it effectively controls the current flowing through the LED. It acts as a current limiting resistor for the LED. The forward voltage of the LED depends on the desired LED current and the temperature. The LED current determines the LED's forward voltage, and generally, higher temperatures tend to increase the forward voltage. The data sheet also provides guidance on selecting appropriate values for the current and the resistor, R1, in the optical link. Let's consider an example. In this optical fiber communication, our goal is to transmit data over a distance of 2,000 meters. The fiber length selection graph provides information for the worst case scenario where a drive current of approximately 43 milliamperes is required to transmit a signal over the entire 2000 meter distance. In this case, when you refer to the forward voltage and current characteristics graph, the VEF requirement is approximately 1.62 volts. Based on the circuit configuration and a supply voltage of 5 volts, the resistor value R1 should be around 78.6 ohms. This resistor limits the current to the desired 43 milliamperes. For a 1 meter cable, the peak power test table shows the power at 60 milliamperes, with the minimum value being minus 16 decibel milliwatt peak. This means that at 43 milliamperes of drive current, the optical output power is slightly lower than at 60 milliamperes. If you factor in fiber attenuation, which is 3.2 decibel per kilometer, the reduced drive current of 43 milliamperes results in a minimum optical power at the end of the fiber of about minus 24 decibel milli. This level is crucial as it represents the minimum signal strength required for the receiver to detect and interpret the data. In practical applications, losses occur in the optical system due to factors such as cable length, connectors, and environmental conditions. To compensate for these losses, it is necessary to increase the driver current. By increasing the drive current, the signal is strengthened to account for losses and ensure reliable reception at the other end. We can create a universal transmitter circuit with slight modifications on the reference design. This circuit is not only compatible with Arduino, but can also be used with other embedded devices. The circuit design is compatible with existing copper wire protocols that encode data before transmitting it through the serial communication medium. You can connect data communication interfaces such as UART, I2C, and Ethernet controllers to the transmitter. The circuit now includes capacitors with values of 100 picofarad and 10 microfarad, and the current limiting resistor is now 56 ohms. This drive circuit employs frequency compensation to reduce the typical rise fall times of the transmitter LED and a small pre-bias voltage to minimize propagation delay differences that cause pulse width distortion. This circuit has a range of 1.5 to 2 kilometers because, with a 56 ohm resistor, we set the transmitter current to 60 milliamperes, and at this current, it can cover up to 2.4 kilometers. 
I have successfully tested it over a distance of 342 meters with Arduino UART communication because I have this length of fiber in my workplace. In the reference circuit, a 451 TTL family driver IC is used. However, I plan to use the 452 family IC from the same 75 series. The main difference is that the 451 consists of an AND logic circuit, while the 452 consists of a NAND circuit logic. The 452 is a dual peripheral driver designed for high current, high speed switching. It's used for memory, line, buffer, lamp, and LED drivers. Let me illustrate the functioning of this IC. Here is its internal logic diagram. If either or both of the inputs of the gate are low, the output of this gate will also be low. As a result, there will be no signal on the transistor's base pin, and it will remain off, causing the LED to turn on. Otherwise, the LED will be turned off because when the gate's output is high, the transistor will turn on, providing a much easier path for current to flow through the transistor rather than the LED. Let's create the circuit according to the design schematic we've modified based on the reference circuit. Connect VCC and ground connection to the 452. Be sure to connect ground or VCC to any unused input channels. If one of the inputs is floating, then the logic gate could be in an unknown state. Connect a bypass capacitor to the VCC pin of the 452 and to ground. This capacitor prevents any power glitches from the 452 from affecting the TTL data input. Place two decoupling capacitors to help filter out noise and ripple from the power supply. Also, place a diode between the output pin of the IC and the connection point of the transmitter to protect the TTL data from reverse voltage. Our drive circuit is nearly ready. Before connecting the optical transmitter, let's test this circuit. Provide the power supply connection to the circuit. Connect both inputs to the ground, and instead of the transmitter, place the LED. Attach the current limiting resistor between VCC and the diode. Connect the LED's anode to the diode and the cathode to the ground. The LED will illuminate because both inputs of the IC are set to low. As you can see, when I change the inputs, the LED responds accordingly. If either or both of the inputs of the IC are low, the LED turns on. Otherwise, when both inputs are set to high, the LED turns off. Now, connect a pull-up resistor to pin 1A of the 452 and to VCC. Remove the LED and connect the transmitter instead. Your transmitter circuit is ready. I am using the amplitude shift keying scheme for communication between two Arduinos through this optical link. To implement ASK, I will utilize the radio head library. The transmitter Arduino will read the potentiometer values and use ASK modulation to send them through the optical link. The receiver Arduino will then receive this data from the optical link and convert it back to its original form. I have set up the hardware, so instead of produce, let me demonstrate it to you in a practical way.
For bidirectional communication, you can combine the transmitter and receiver into a single circuit to create a transceiver circuit. This can be easily used for serial communication over optical fiber. You can implement various schemes such as Manchester, 4B5B, or 8B10B, and interface with other protocols like I2C, UART, RS-232, and RS-485 using this circuit. Here is an Arduino bidirectional communication example. This is a simple demonstration of optical fiber data transmission. Both Arduinos communicate with each other using UART to control the servo motor and LED brightness with potentiometers. I have tested this circuit's range at a distance of 342 meters with an Arduino. I reduced the transmitter current to 15 milliampers, and the circuit works fine. You can download the resources, including the code, transmitter, and receiver models from my blog. Real-time simulation of this fiber optical link is not possible in Produce because the SPICE simulator does not offer capabilities for working with or modeling light or photonic circuits. However, you can still use a photodiode and phototransistor with electrical signaling. Optical link simulation model is created using the photodiode DT8811VB and phototransistor Q2N3904 SPICE models with slight modifications. It represents a fiber optical transmitter and receiver with an optical fiber link. It is designed solely for the demonstration of TTL-compatible devices, Arduino and other microcontrollers, connected with an optical link. Therefore, you can directly connect Arduino and other devices to this model without the need for additional driver circuits. That's it. I hope you now have a better understanding of optical fiber data transmission fundamentals with Arduino. If you have any suggestions or ideas for improvements, please feel free to leave your comments. Stay with us for our next unique project with Arduino.